Welcome to St. Peter's of the Valley Episcopal Church in Basalt, Colorado, service of lessons and carols. We are so glad that you could join us for this Christmas Eve, Christmas Day service. And I'm going to share just a few moments the origin of lessons and carols, and we will begin our service together. The service of lessons and carols in the Anglican tradition started in 1878 and was formalized as a Christmas service in 1880 by the Bishop of Truro, Edward Benson, who later became the Archbishop of Canterbury. The service is traditionally celebrated on or near Christmas Eve and the stories of the fall of humanity, the promise of the Messiah and the birth of Jesus are told in a series of short Bible readings from Genesis, the prophetic books and the gospels interspersed with the singing of Christmas carols and hymns. This day will be no different. Bishop Benson was appointed Archbishop of Canterbury in 1883 and the nine lessons service, as it was known originally, began to gain popularity across the Church of England and in the wider Anglican communion. While lessons and carols most often occur in Anglican churches, Numerous Christian denominations have adopted the service or a variation of it as part of their Christmas celebrations. Notably, we note in 1918, the Reverend Eric Milner White, who was the new Dean of King's College in Cambridge, introduced the service to the college chapel, taking advantage of the established choral tradition of the choir of King's College. It proved highly successful and started an annual tradition from 1919 on it, albeit with some alterations to Benson's original format. The popularity of this service was firmly established when the British Broadcast Corporation, BBC, began to broadcast the service in 1928. And except for one year, 1930, it's been broadcast every year since. So please join us from home as we share scripture and song in the celebration of Christmas. Once in royal David's city stood a lonely cattle shed where a mother lay her baby in a manger for his bed.
Beloved in Christ, at this Christmas tide, let it be our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass and the babe lying in the manger. Therefore, let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience until the glorious redemption brought to us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all his people, for unity and brotherhood within the church he came to build, and especially within this our own community. And because this would rejoice his heart, let us remember in his name the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all those who know not Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no man can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh and with whom in the Lord Jesus we are one forevermore. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself has taught us. Please join me as we pray together the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ give us the joys of everlasting life and unto the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring us all. Amen. from the book of Genesis. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground, but a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, 
and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day that you eat of it, you shall die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore, a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. The word of the Lord.
reading from Isaiah. God comforts his people and calls on them to prepare for redemption. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to the high mountain. O Zion, herald of good things. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
The third lesson is from the book of Zephaniah. It tells that the judgment of Israel will be ended and the mighty Lord will bring victory and renewal to God's people. The reading is from chapter 3, verses 14 to 18. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. fourth lesson is from Luke, the first chapter, verses 26 to 38. The angel Gabriel announces to the Virgin Mary that she will bear the Son of the Most High. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, <clears throat> the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our fifth lesson comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Merry Christmas, everyone. The sixth lesson is from Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. 
Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to the Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among us, those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word came, 
became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We ask you to remember those in need, including your beloved St. Peter's of the Valley. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself to us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Blossoms flowered amid the snow Upon a winter's night Was born the child, the Christmas rose The King of love and light The angels sang the shepherd's song The grateful earth rejoiced And at his blessed birth the stars 
then exultation rise. O oh, come, let us adore Him. O oh, come, let us adore Him. O oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ the Again the heart with rapture glows To greet the holy night That gave the world its Christmas rose Its king of love and light Let every voice acclaim his name The grateful chorus swell From paradise to earth might dwell. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon us and scatter the darkness from before our path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.